What's up YouTube? We are back with another comparison. These are two awesome cars, awesome in different ways. I've uh, featured both of these on this channel before. I'm here with my neighbor Paul who owns this beautiful 88 Hi. Fiero GT and we uh, compared that to my Insight a few months ago and uh, I think the Insight handily won the uh, comparison. Not according <laughs> to the votes that I have seen. No, um, I'm being silly. And, and the Fiero is still here. I True. I, I, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yes, I did sell the Insight, but I, I bought it to sell it. But that was a that was a neat little car. But yes, um, and then we have the uh, the fifth gen Prelude, the 01 Prelude, which I've featured many times on this channel. And so we're going to talk about each car. Uh, so we're just going to go through about five different metrics, and uh, we'll discuss them one by one. And why don't we start with the Fiero? Um, and uh, I won't say much about it because uh, we did in the last video and people searching this probably already know about Fieros, but I'll just do a little walk around for anyone who's kind of new to it. This has 88,000 miles? 83. And just for 83, 83, okay. It's in great shape. I just drove it. Um, I've driven it for the last few years on and off. And you said uh, st the horsepower is like 140 to 150. Yeah, um, they came from the factory about 140 horsepower, 170 torque. Gives you a 0 to 60 about 7.8, 7.9 seconds with a 5-speed manual. And that's the 88 GT, which was the last and most perfect Fiero ever made. Um, and then you've done a few mods that gives you a bump like 10, 10 horsepower, 10 I, I torque maybe. I changed the computer. I didn't tune it for speed or power. It's tuned more for smoothness. And I've also put in 1.6 rockers, which probably gives it another 10, 15 horsepower. Okay. So, sweet. yeah, I'm at least 150. Sweet. Yeah, excellent. Um, so since we're talking about performance, why don't we just, uh, I guess you talked about performance. Um, performance would also include uh, the handling. This is a very great handling car. Um, comments on that? Well, it's a blast to drive at highway speeds or if you're really moving. If I have to give the car a drawback, it's that it has no power steering. Mm. And I just so, drove it around on the interstate and around mm -hmm. town, and I actually enjoyed the no power steering, but I, I didn't do a lot of city driving. Yeah. In highway, we were 70 miles an hour at 2,500 RPM, so. Yep. Um, so let's talk about that too, or talk about performance, economy. You said you get, you're getting in the 30s highway? I just drove from here up to Greenville, South Carolina and back, about 200 miles, and I got over 30 miles per gallon. Okay. So, awesome. Awesome. That was pretty cool. So 0 to 60, 7.8, 30 miles per gallon highway. Uh, we'll talk about the Prelude now. Uh, this has 200 horsepower and 156 foot-pounds of torque. It does not feel as fast as the Fiero because um, A, it weighs more. This weighs 3,000 something pounds. Um, whereas the, uh, yeah, the Fiero is 27. Uh, and it has less torque. You've got 170, 180, I've got 156-ish. Um, so the Prelude does not feel as fast. Um, however, it does outperform the Fiero in terms of outright speed. It's 0 to 60 is like 7.0 for the SH model. Let me do a quick walk around too for just for fun. Um, and uh, handling, um, I like the way both cars feel. They feel, they both feel great in different ways. The, uh, the Fiero definitely feels tighter. Oh, yeah. um, but the Prelude, I think, feels more composed and it won an award, I, I think it was Car and Driver's best handling car under $50,000 back in around the year 2000 for this fifth gen. Um, but uh, yeah, but the Prelude's way heavier and uh, definitely you can feel it, it feels more floaty. Well, but I will say, drive, I have rear wheel drive. true, yes, I got front wheel and you got rear wheel. In terms of economy, the Prelude's, uh, uh, because of the gearing, when you're at 70, you're like at 3,500 RPM, so I'm only getting like 28, highway like mileage. 4,000 RPM. Come on, I just drove Yes, it. yeah, it's up there towards 4,000 for sure, yeah. I'm trying to be nice to it. Um, so uh, it's not exactly a highway cruiser, uh, not the best gas mileage. Um, 28's okay, but for a four-cylinder. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> there she is. All right, well, let's talk about, uh, let's just talk about interior space. Uh, let's go to the Fiero. Uh, of course, you can fit a hammock or a some golf clubs back there, which is what all Pontiac owners need to be able to do. The hammock especially. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, two seats, of course, five speed. Uh, I'll just show the tack here and the dashboard. It's actually quite nice. 
ultra cool cup holders. Yep, you got your cup holders there, factory cup holders. And uh, your bolt-on airplane-esque. Yeah, everything's real simple in here. It's comfortable. And with modern yeah, tires, yep. I actually have storage up front. Yep, you got your storage. Ooh. Excellent. That's where the spare would go. Yep. Nice. But I, I see no need to keep my 30-year-old spare in there. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any comments on uh, interior space? It's actually quite comfortable. I'm um, about 6'2". I don't have my seat all the way back. I have plenty of headroom. Plenty of width also. Um, it is a very comfortable car. It would be nice if there was more storage bins because all I really have. Yeah, storage is a low point. Is yeah. that and a couple of other little holders. Right. Um, and a strange thing about this car I noticed again when I drove it just a moment ago was the clutch pedals in the center. You like to complain. And uh, yeah, I do. And uh, so the clutch pedal, it's weird, but it, it's once you get used to it, it's it's no big deal. But it is a different a different thing. Uh, cool. Uh, interior of the Prelude, uh, classic Honda. This is uh, the thing I love about this car is the analog feeling of everything. So everything, all the gauges are real, of course, and just everything's very plain and simple, apart from that DVD player. Um, plenty of storage. Uh, cup holders that are, are real cup holders, uh, etc. Of course, we have the sunroof, and uh, and we have back seats, something the uh, Fiero does not have, but is not supposed to. Um, let's see, reliability. Why don't we talk about reliability? Um, you really have not had a lot of problems with this car. Not much. Um, You've only like, what, five, four or five years? Uh, since 2014. Okay, six, seven years. Let's see, right now I have a very, very slow coolant leak that has to be taken care of. Right. And other than that, you know, over that time I've had to replace the heater core. Um, that was back in 2014. I just got new tires. I had to replace the struts and the shocks also around 2014, 2015. But you know, after 30 years, things do wear out. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. I mean, that's fantastic. And, you know, I remember back in the day when they were making Pontiacs, they were kind of always on the bottom scale of reliability with consumer reports but I think you know this car is different than that because everything got sorted by the end of the production and uh, I mean you're an example this was well taken care of and that's really not a lot to do in six or seven years no it's not much so and, and seeing this you know considering how old it is it's 33 years old now so um, uh, excellent. I will say you don't see a lot of Furos on the road. Part of that is the age, and I think part of that is that, that you know this is a car like any older car that when it starts breaking, um, people just you know they quit trying to fix it up. Um, I don't see them that often. No, not too often. They they don't rust because the body's plastic. Right. Uh, there are Furo clubs around. Georgia Furo Club is great, and they'll frequently do all sorts of repairs and stuff on their cars and picks up other ones and mm -hmm. put them out on the market yep uh, yeah in the last few years uh, my neighbor here has tried to sell me at least a dozen Fieros um, that I've declined so far <laughs> but he's weakening he's tried to sell me this one too <laughs> so because I can get one with a 3800 <gasps> yeah a yeah it's a little a uh, <laughs> little more than I want to handle right now um, cool so reliability um, Reliability with the Prelude, um, I'm going to say, um, as we all know, Hondas are bulletproof and top-notch. Um, I will say, um, this car in particular has so much tech that um, I am seeing a lot of folks with 3, 4, and 5th gen Preludes having uh, issues. And again, it is an old car, so that's going to happen. But it is one of those things, I will say, that, that driving around, there's so much tech in this suspension uh, engine that it's one of those things that I've wondered as an owner, when is the big ticket item gonna drop? Now it hasn't happened yet, the car's running great, but uh, reliability, so I'm, I'm gonna say reliability is great with a Honda, but with a Honda that's got so many special things about it, this was the premiere of a lot of Honda's technology. They used the Prelude as their platform to bring about VTEC and bring about four wheel steering and uh, ATTS, the SH Super Handling, this was the first car that came on. Uh, so with all that comes extra things that can break. So far, I've been uh, lucky and the car is well taken care of. Um, but that is a concern, I would say, reliability if you're thinking about e really either of these cars. I mean, the age. 
Um, so yeah, we recovered performance, efficiency, uh, storage, interior, reliability. Um, I guess the, really the last thing is uh, we want to just, uh, um, you know, I, I think they both look great. I think they're both great looking cars. But one of the fun things about this one is it's so exotic. You don't see very many Fieros anymore. And right, yeah, you get a lot. Of, you this, get a lot of comments. Earlier this week, my wife and I were buying another vehicle, and people from the dealership kept coming out to look at my car. Right. Just like, wow, what is that? I haven't seen one for so long. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a great car because you can almost disassemble it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that earlier. To well, we added keyless entry. Uh, to change the, the height of the stick, I had to remove four bolts, unscrew the top, and then lift up, and it's right underneath. Yeah. Uh, I, I can get to the select cable for the clutch by removing this and a few things in the back. Uh, oh, I have also replaced the slave cylinder for the clutch. It's fairly easy to do. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the car could just be disassembled. It's like a huge model. Yeah. And I am not a very good mechanic. And, and I will say that is true. I will also say that that is typical of pretty much any older car that I've ever had. Um, working on them is way simple. Um, you know, it's, it's simple. Maybe this is more simple than other things from the 80s. Um, you know, and just to kind of shoot off of your story, I, I, uh, I actually had someone last week um, with the Prelude. I was just driving down Washington Road, which is a busy road here where we live. And uh, I was uh, just driving along and I looked to my left and there was a guy in a uh, Buick SUV, a new one. Uh, and he rolled his window down as we're doing 2030 on the road and kind of signaled to me and I rolled my window down and he said, hey man, it's a sweet prelude. So I probably don't get near the comments that you get um, because yours looks <laughs> like more like an exotic, but um, um, it's, uh, it's, they're definitely both, I think special cars um cool. closing uh favorite thing favorite thing um it's just a blast to drive you know, it, it's one of those vehicles where you're doing 35 45 feels like you're doing 90. so the cop can't stop you but you still have the thrill there you go yeah i love it it's a car you can take anywhere and if you just kind of park it and then sit for a while somewhere else you can watch people come by and look at it. it it's right. just a fun vehicle to have. For sure. Very unique. Very different. Very Yes, absolutely. And it's a great car. I just drove it again. And it's just, there's there's nothing I can say bad about these at all. It's just a phenomenal car. Um, favorite thing about the Prelude. I'm just going to say, um, we all know Honda is a great company. They make great cars. And I think the Prelude probably, uh, what I'd say my favorite thing is that the Prelude represents everything great about Honda. The technology... Um, the uh, reliability, the, the styling back then, 20 years ago, this is sort of the, um, what a lot of people say the last great Honda because this is when things went from analog to digital. So this car captures, even though it is high tech, it captures that analog feel when you get in it, you rev the engine, the cable, the throttle, the analog gauges, the, you know, the ability to row your own gears, um, VTEC, all those things are special. They're reminiscent of a era that is gone and I think that's why people love these cars. And I think that's my favorite thing. When I get in this car it feels sort of like a time capsule to uh, an, an earlier time when things were simpler and maybe more special than they are now. I don't know. The grass is always greener but um, we're going to close with that because we're getting a little long but uh, two special cars, Prelude and Fiesta. Uh, Fiero. So, Fiero. Did I say Fiesta? <laughs> See, I'm, that's my other car. Yeah, Prelude and Fiat. Uh, oh, <laughs> Prelude and Fiero. Uh, if you have comments and you would pick one of these, what would your favorite be? I'd love to yeah. hear, and my, my neighbor uh, obviously <laughs> has his vote. We'll be looking to see what you think. Uh, and uh, tell you what, let's give it, let's give it two months, and, um, and then we'll count the comments, and whoever wins has to buy the other a beer, which you always buy the beer yeah. in our case. So uh, maybe you will win, and I will you, finally you pay you back for all okay. these beers. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a good day.